This video is sponsored by Brilliant. So here's the problem we're dealing with. I am holding a coin in each hand. Now, if I tell you at least one of the coins is tails, then the odds that both coins are tails is one out of three. Because once I say that at least one coin is tails, your sample space, which starts as four possibilities, goes down to three. One of those is tails tails, so the odds that they're both tails is one out of three. But if instead I had said this coin is tails, what are the odds both are tails? Well, now the probability seemingly jumps to 50-50. Because once I say this one is tails, well, there are two possibilities, one of which is tails tails. If I instead, mix it up, had said this one is tails, well, same thing. The probability jumps to 50-50 because there's only two outcomes that are possible with this one being tails. So it doesn't matter whether I say this one is tails or this one. As soon as I reveal one to be tails, the odds go to 50-50 that both coins are tails. But the problem we run into is that if it doesn't matter which hand I reveal to be tails, I just have to do it for the odds to go to 50-50, then what if I say this one is tails? You know for a fact that I revealed one of them to be tails. Now if I said this one is tails, the odds are 50-50 that both are tails. If I reveal this one is tails, still 50-50 that both are tails. All you know is that one of these for sure is tails. So your odds of guessing that both are tails is one out of three, yet at the same time, regardless of which one I revealed, the odds should jump to 50-50. So the question is, did the odds change at all? And when I do reveal, hey, this one is tails, do the odds actually become 50-50 that both are tails, or are we missing something? So let's just get to the answer. The odds don't really change, but there's still some nuance. And the weirdness lies in the tails tails option. Because if both the coins are tails, I can either reveal this one or this one. Not both, but I can reveal one or the other. And the fact that I can do that expands our sample space. So here's what I'm talking about. If we ignore all the trials that are heads heads, just looking at scenarios when at least one coin is tails, these three options are equally likely. They'll come up one third of the time. That's not the weird part. But since I am going to reveal one hand to be tails, there's a fourth possibility in our sample space, another tails tails. But in one case, I reveal the left one to be tails. And in the other case, I'll reveal the right one. So I'm circling the hand I reveal. For the first two options, I don't need to circle the tails because, well, I only have one option for each of those, but I will circle them. So this is now the sample space of what can happen when I reveal one hand to be tails. These first two options will still come up one third of the time, but these last two happen one sixth of the time. Tails, tails overall is still one out of three but that becomes split evenly since I'll reveal either the right or left with 50% probability. So if I tell you, hey, the left hand is tails, then these are your two options, but it's not a 50-50 chance that both are tails because these situations don't happen with equal probability. And it's easy to see what the probability is if I just write out the expected results, where if we ignore all the heads-heads options, we'd expect to get Heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. And again, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. But remember, for the tails, tails option, half the time I'll reveal the left hand to be tails, and half the time I'll reveal the right one. Notice that one third of the results are heads, tails, another one third is tails, heads, and then you got one out of six being tails, tails with a left reveal, and one out of six being tails, tails with a right reveal. So this is your sample space. And it's why I wrote out six trials, because that's how many trials you'd expect before getting all possible outcomes. So finally, if I told you, hey, the left hand is tails, well, these are all the possible outcomes, and of them, one out of three are tails tails.
So the probability doesn't actually change. When I say, hey, at least one is tails, the odds are one out of three that both are tails. But by revealing one, although it seems like the odds go to 50-50, they don't. Because I could have revealed this one or this one if they were both tails. But imagine if I had told you beforehand that if it is tails tails, then I will definitely reveal this hand being tails. It will never be tails tails and I'll show you this one. So if you knew that beforehand and I said, all right, this one is tails, now the odds do become 50-50. If we go back to our sample space with six trials, this is no longer an option. If it's tails tails, I will guaranteed reveal the left one. So it goes back to what we'd expect. If I reveal the left to be tails, well, there are four possibilities, two of which are tails tails, changed to 50-50. I didn't even need to write out six trials in this case, but there you go. So when I reveal one coin to be tails, the probability can change. It just depends on how you're gonna reveal which one is tails when they're both tails. In that previous example, if I had revealed, hey, this one is tails, you know with 100% certainty now that it's tails heads. Because if it was tails tails, I would have revealed this one as we agreed upon. And this same thing applies to the ace example we saw in the previous video. There we imagine a hypothetical deck with only four cards in it, and these would be the six possible hands you could have. If I tell you one of my cards is an ace, then the chance I'm holding both aces is one in five. But if I give you the suit and say I'm holding the ace of spades, well now it looks like there's a one out of three chance that I'm holding both aces. But if I have both aces, I could either say I have the ace of spades or the ace of hearts. And that again is what messes with the probability. Like here's all those possible hands written out twice. So 12 total. Now when both cards are aces, then I could either reveal I have the ace of spades or the ace of hearts. And we'll assume I mix that up evenly. That means if I tell you I have an ace of spades, we're actually looking at five possibilities, one of which is two aces. So the probability is still one in five when I specify the suit. As opposed to thinking, oh hey, I see six hands that have an ace of spades and two of them are two aces. So it should be two out of six or one in three like we saw earlier. But that's not the case when I randomly choose which ace to reveal to you when I have both. So there we go. The probability doesn't actually change when you randomly decide which tails or which ace to reveal when you have two. But guess what? Regarding the coins, they were both heads. Don't believe everything you see on the internet, unless you're over at Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, engineering, data analysis, programming, and AI. With a first principles approach, this platform helps you build an understanding from the ground up. And what I enjoy most about Brilliant is their animations and interactive exercises that help you gain a foundational understanding of even the more complex topics not through memorization, but through critical thinking skills and problem solving to help you become a better thinker. And if you like these counterintuitive kinds of puzzles, they have several data and probability courses that cover the same types of problems, such as Simpsons Paradox, the boy-girl paradox, and plenty more. And you can get started right now by going to brilliant.org slash zackstar or by clicking the link below where you can try everything free for a full 30 days. You can also scan the QR code on the screen now. And with that, going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below. And I'll see you all in the next video.